Hi class, welcome back to the kitchen. This week we're going to do one of my firm family favourites. It's lasagna this week. And there are lots and lots of recipes for lasagna out there, but this is my go-to recipe. I've been doing this for years and I just love it. It really works and uh, I'd like you to be able to share in the joy of making this. So it looks like a lot of ingredients this week, but uh, you know we assemble them very quickly together. So we have 500 grams of minced meat here with 5% fat. We have some diced onion, a half a diced onion, with two cloves of garlic. I've grated one of them. I, I'm going to grate the other one during the class. We have a tin of chopped tomatoes. I have two tablespoons of passata here. I have a tablespoon of puree because it's slightly more concentrated and it gives a lovely uh, bit of flavor and texture. I also have a grated carrot. Now traditionally grated carrot would not go into a lasagna, but I'm trying to uh, Im improve the vitamin uh, content here. So this is beautiful for adding vitamin A. And those are all the ingredients really that you need for your bolognese sauce. And then we also need lasagna obviously to, to build this dish. Then to complement the bolognese sauce, we also have to do what's called a bechamel sauce, which really is a white sauce. And the basis or foundation of a white sauce is a thing called a roux. And a roux is made up from equal quantities of fat and flour. So 50 grams of margarine or butter, 50 grams of flour. And then I also have 100 grams of grated cheese here. 75 a mixture of cheddar and mozzarella and I also have 25 grams of parmesan but you can use any combination of soft or hard cheeses uh, ricotta works well in it uh, any cheese really that you have will work in it and then to complement the dish it, oh, we have 500 mils of milk as well to make that up and we have a new ingredient this week we have nutmeg so nutmeg is a little nut like this and then you just grate whatever quantity you need and then I also have a teaspoon of Dijon mustard just to give this a really beautiful flavour. And then in addition to all of that, you need to sometimes serve something to complement it. You could do a salad, a lovely tossed green salad. You could do some salsa, like some chopped tomato, red onion and lime juice, which would be really nice. Some basil and tomato and a drizzle of olive oil would be beautiful. What I'm going to do tonight, just to give you another scale, is we're going to do some home uh, roasted uh, chips and we're going to make those spicy wedges so I have a tablespoon of paprika a tablespoon of oil and I have some salt and pepper in here so we're going to cut the potatoes later we're going to toss them around in this and then put them into the oven with the lasagna and the whole dinner should be cooked together so it's economical on energy because the whole dinner is cooked in the oven eventually the equipment then for this class is a serving dish and then to prepare your vegetables and your other ingredients, you're going to need a grater, a balloon whisk, two wooden spoons, one for the bolognese and one for the bechamel sauce. And you're also going to need a knife and a peeler. To start with then, I always uh, switch on the heat and then we're going to add in the meat. And all those white little flecks in the meat are actually little bits of fat. So as I said, it's 5% fat we're using this week. You need to be careful, I suppose, looking at labels when you're in the shop. Sometimes minced meat can have up to 12 or 15% fat in it. And we, uh, we know that we should be trying to reduce, particularly our intake of saturated fat. So try and choose a low fat uh, selection of minced meat if you can. And then you stir that. That'll take about three or four minutes until all of the meat turns brown. So this has been frying off for about two or three minutes and as you can see now the colour has changed completely to brown from red and that's what you're looking for. So we're ready to add the other ingredients now. So to this we're just going to add our diced onion and our grated garlic. So I've already prepared those. And then I'm just going to grate the other piece of garlic. So if you have a garlic crusher, you could use it either, or if you have neither of these, you can just uh, use a wide bladed knife on a chopping board and just smash it, and then you can dice it up into small pieces. Okay, we're also going to add in the carrot, and I've mostly prepared that. 
and it's grated carrot that's gone in. So we'll just finish off grating the rest of the carrot. And then we're going to add in the tomato sauce and the, of the chopped tomatoes, the passata and the tomato puree. Get all the garlic in, put all that lovely flavour. And then we're going to add the tin of tomatoes and their chopped tomatoes that I'm using. Now, if you like a smooth texture in your lasagna, you can uh, mash those with a potato masher or you could blend them to make them smooth. But I think the chunky texture is quite nice in them. And also, we're going to add our tablespoon of tomato puree, that gives a nice flavour and we're also going to add two tablespoons of uh, tomato passata which is really uh, pureed tomatoes strained. Okay and that's really just the, the bolognese sauce made so you can turn it down to a gentle simmer and just leave it there to cook uh, for 10 or 15 minutes just keep stirring it occasionally and while that's cooking you can start your uh, bechamel sauce which is what we're going to move on to next at this stage now you can preheat the oven so you can put that up to about 170 and then that should be preheated when we have the roux sauce made or the bechamel sauce made we're going to start the bechamel sauce now and the bechamel sauce is made up of equal quantities of butter and flour as I said earlier. So we're going to melt the 50 grams of butter. When the butter is melted we add in the flour and you add that in one go and then it's very important that you mix it quite well. Now you're going to think this is an awful mess at this stage but this is the way it's supposed to look. And what we've made here now is a roux and that is spelled R-O-U-X and that is the foundation of many many sauces and then you add your liquid to that whatever it is for our purposes today it's milk we're adding so we can start off gradually adding some of our 500 millilitres of milk and you only add in a small amount at a time and then it's really important that you mix it until it comes up to in a really smooth texture or it comes back into that texture and you just keep adding it gradually and beating. Now you have to have patience. The temptation is to throw all of the milk in together, but that's where you're going to make a mistake. Okay, so you can swap over to your balloon whisk if you have one at this stage, because we're looking for a lovely smooth sauce. beat, add and beat and always continuing on the heat. All the milk has been added at this stage and I've been beating after each addition. What you're looking for is a beautiful smooth texture where there are no lumps visible on the back of the spoon. So all we have in there is butter, flour and milk. So depending on what sauce you're making you add different ingredients or flavouring compounds. For our bechamel sauce today we're just going to use our teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Which will give it a lovely punch of flavour and also we're going to use an absolutely beautiful ingredient if you have it in your kitchen it's nutmeg and you just grate in one or two pinches of nutmeg and that just gives a beautiful flavour to all milk puddings and nutmeg can be used in either sweet or savoury dishes and it just does magic when it's cooked and when it's flavour compounds that come from it when it's cooked, they're just, I don't know, they're just magic. But they really transform this sauce from a basic, simple white sauce into a really, really nice flavoured sauce. And now we're going to add some cheese. So I have grated cheddar, mozzarella and parmas in here, but I'm going to keep some back for the end to put on the top of this dish just before it goes into the oven. And at this stage I've switched off the heat because if you continue to heat the sauce and put in the cheese, 
it, it will start to coagulate and it will start to get overcooked and go stringy and we don't want that. We just want to have a beautiful, smooth, creamy cheese sauce going into the oven. So the final stage of this uh, part of the lasagna is that we're going to assemble it. So assemble this lasagna, you put in a thin layer of lasagna sauce on the base. And then you can put your lasagna sheets on top of that. And that's just so they will be easy enough to serve up later. Then to that you add in your lasagna sheets. Now, depending on the shape of your dish and the size of your dish, you may have to actually break the sheets. So you just can break them in half. And if you need to, you can sometimes take the corners off, just so that they'll fit in quite nicely like that. And then the next thing we do is add in a layer of our bechamel sauce. Now if you like, depending on how you feel about salt and pepper for flavouring, you can add in some salt and pepper in this. If you're on a low salt diet, perhaps you could just leave the salt out of it. But just put in a little bit of salt and pepper. And then you repeat the layers. You do another layer of mince, another layer of lasagna, another layer of sauce, and you end up with the top layer of sauce and we'll have a look at that at the end. So we've layered this up, continuing in the same way, and then we've ended up with a last layer of sauce. So just smooth that out on the surface. And I know that my recipe fits in this dish because I've used it numerous times, but you need to be careful that you don't fill the dish right up to the top, because this will bubble up a lot in cooking and it'll all overflow out over your uh, out over the dish and destroy your oven. So the last thing we're going to do then is add in the remaining grated cheese and then I always like to cover the lasagna for the first half an hour in the oven because I find that lasagna the, the sheets get very very crispy and particularly if you have children in the house they find it very hard or if you have older people uh, it's very hard to eat the lasagna if it gets crispy so I suggest that you cover it with tin foil for the first 25-30 minutes and then you can take it off for the last 10 minutes to get that beautiful golden brown colour. So our lasagna is ready to go in the oven now and it's preheated. So we just pop that in and if you have a timer on your cooker, you can set it. Otherwise, if you have a, an additional timer, like this one I have here, you can just set it to go for about 25 minutes. Now, in the meantime, we're going to make our wedges. As a complement to this beautiful lasagna we're making, we could also use some wedges. So you just take some potatoes, half them, depending on what size they are. I'm just going to quarter these because they just are that particular size and then what you do is put them into a Ziploc bag that you've already got some oil and paprika and salt and pepper in and just toss them around in that. So you just toss all those potatoes around until you get them all completely covered in oil, paprika and salt and pepper. They're all nicely coated and you need to make sure of course that they're all kind of the same size you want them all cooked at the same time right and then you can just pop those on to your baking tray in a single layer and then pop those into the oven with your lasagna and the two of those should be cooked at the same time so let's check back later and we'll see how our food has turned out. So we put the lasagna in the oven with a tin foil covering it. We let it cook for 25 minutes. Then I took the tin foil off and I left it for another 10 minutes in the oven. So after 35 minutes, this is what uh, your lasagna looks like and our wedges are also cooked at this stage. So now we're ready to serve up. So this is your challenge this week to make lasagna. And the new skill that you'll be learning this week is how you make a roux sauce 
and then you can make that into any sauce after that, like parsley sauce, bread sauce, the bechamel sauce we made today. But that is a life skill, being able to make lasagna. And we've made that from very, from first principles really, from scratch. Uh, it's very economical, it's very nutritious, and I think there are very few people who don't like lasagna. And of course, as always, you can replace the minced meat in it with uh, corn mince, for vegetarians but it's a very adaptable recipe and good luck making it and hope you enjoy it and we'll see you all again next week